Children, we're going to need to give you 150 cc's of the Mario stat. I didn't agree to this. D I mean, too bad. We're doing this. But I, I didn't All right. agree to this. Now, this is, this is simple, Children. All you got to do is you got to swing your arms from side to side. Yeah? All right? That's, that's the first step. All right? And, yeah, now you're doing it. You're doing the Mario. And then you just take one step, and then again. And there you go. You're doing the Mario. Just like that. Okay. Yep. Um, I'm still quite comfortably seated, but... Yeah, no, nobody, nobody did the Mario with me. That was, um, that was wholly a failure. No! No! More than any other gaming community, speedrunning and its events, hosted by Games Done Quick, seems to attract more scandals, controversy, outrage, and strange characters than any other. In my first video on GDQ, I went over the history of the event and called into question some of the most notable bans and rulings of the time. Since AGDQ 2018, the event has had no shortage of further mishaps and mishandlings. Let's take a look at who the latest victims of GDQ's banhammer have been, where the outrage has come from, and what some of the deeper problems within the speedrunning community look like. This time around, I'm going to get some first-hand experience at one of these speedrunning events. And the only way to do that is by becoming a speedrunner myself. Gotta go quick. There's a little bit of a time skip later on that allows me to FUCK THIS SHIT! HOW THE FUCK DO PEOPLE DO THIS SHIT?! Okay, so maybe I don't have what it takes to be a speedrunner, but I did reach out to some of the top players who have attended these events and are well known within the community in order to get their insider perspectives. For a recap of events prior to summer 2018 and a more detailed rundown of the organization itself, check out my first video on GDQ if you haven't yet. The first controversy of this era comes out of Summer Games Done Quick 2018. Even when bans aren't issued, the GDQ staff and Twitter users will make it known to players when they are upset at the type of language used during speedruns. Even when that language is directed towards literal in-game NPCs. Such as when GDQ staff got angry at player Mike Canis for calling an in-game boss a soy boy. Very important luck-based things and one of them will be happening with this soy boy right here. Um, <laughs> It just we'll, said we'll, that. We'll say. <laughs> it was fun in games until your runner used the recently popular homophobic slash transphobic slur, soy boy, towards the end. Sad emoji. Mike replied, I didn't know that's what it meant. Sorry. Okay, so the first mistake was apologizing to an absurd person when you did nothing wrong. Mike wasn't using the term to demean anyone for being trans or for being gay. He was literally insulting a virtual demon boss. In a video titled AGDQ's Diversity Problem, speedrunner Real Alpha Gamer shared some thoughts on this. Candace calls a boss a soy boy. A soy boy. He calls one of the bosses a soy boy. <laughs> and they got mad at him. They got mad at him. The staff got mad at him. They're like, don't, don't say that again. 
Shortly after SGDQ 2018, the tragic shooting at Jacksonville Landing in Florida occurred during the Madden 2019 esports event. In response to this, GDQ organizer Cool Maddie made a thread on the speedrunning subreddit detailing plans to create a private blacklist of suspicious and potentially threatening individuals within not only the speedrunning community, but other gaming communities as well. His plan was to involve other event organizers and get their input of names to add to this private list. Now, Kulmati's idea of a private blacklist might have good intentions, but ultimately policies that give immense unchecked power to organizers for the sake of security, which is what this is, unfortunately end up rife with abuse. Especially when Kulmati says, event managers may report as much or as little as they wish about particular incidents. Basically, managers can decide what to include about specific people without full context or even good reason as to why that player will be banned from not just GDQ, but other events as well. It's basically the Patriot Act for gamers, and we all know how well that turned out. Even the responses from members of the speedrunning subreddit were unenthused with the idea to say the least. Leading up to 2019's AGDQ, there were a couple preemptive bans issued out to the players R. White Goose and Graviton due to some unsavory remarks they made in a private Discord. Kotaku reported on the situation, citing that speedrunner Andrea, who I actually interviewed in my last GDQ video, posted a now-deleted Twitter thread showcasing screenshots of Discord logs involving White Goose and Graviton. There are pages and pages of logs that I don't feel the need to go through here Year, but the worst of it was certainly when White Goose made a few comments about Jews, following the typical alt-right narrative of blaming Jews for everything or something like that. Also, Goose used the T-word several times, which many people find offensive. Initially, GDQ did not take any action against these speedrunners because they could not verify if the Discord logs were real. Then, after a few angry tweets, they of course caved in and banned Goose and Graviton. Interestingly though, both players had completely different reactions. Our White Goose seems to have a change of heart stating that those screenshots show conversations which contain hurtful concepts, ideas, and conspiracy theories which I have come to fully and completely reject. While Graviton, who actually seems to have said far less damning things, reacted by saying in a now deleted tweet, when your wrong think gets you more followers than your GDQ run would have got. I reached out to Super Mario 64 speedrunner and world record holder Cheese for his thoughts thoughts on this, since he knew of White Goose before all of this, and had actually shared some thoughts on this situation. When I found out, which was through Andrea's tweet, or well, what them uh, showing what All Right Goose and Graviton said and all that stuff online, I had no idea prior to anything that All Right Goose had said, or even that he had a secret alias online. I think most people had no idea. And I was shocked when I saw that kind of stuff. And I did feel a little bit different about All Right Goose. I lost a lot. I definitely lost a sense of respect for him. What really got me uh, upset and into the whole, I guess, conversation was all the retweets and replies that I saw to Andrea's tweet, which was uh, a lot of the trans community and a lot of the LGBT community in general that started replying and retweeting and saying stuff like, look how these disgusting people or whatever, speedrunning, totally unacceptable community, uh, GDQ is an awful organization, et cetera, et cetera. Um, transphobic, this and that, just all these crazy things. And I, the first thing I thought was, hold up. <laughs> Getting this situation resolved with the Graviton and our Goose, great. Let's do that. But immediately jumping into these crazy, crazy accusations and all this stuff about the entire speedrunning community and games and quick and all this stuff was like, if you're going to go out and complain about everybody and say oh, everyone is awful and unaccepting, then you're just going to get other people to not like you either. They're gonna, you're, just, you're, you're just separating the community more from you. So if you're saying that GDQ is an unaccepting environment, that's one thing. But then, then you should throw out these awful words and talk about all other speedrunners and how awful they are then that's, you're just going to get people to disrespect you more. Despite the discriminatory nature of these Discord logs, though, an argument could be made that they were still conversations held in a private chat, and that none of it had to be related to speedrunning itself. Either way, streamer Caleb Hart seems to be fed up with the hyper-political climate surrounding video game speedrunning, of all things. This, this recent event with Goose and whatever, 
I don't know. It's becoming a bit ex it just, it's just becoming excessive. It used to be all about playing video games and raising money for charity. That was that was it. Now it's all about this, you know, political correctness and this other irrelevant shit that's just not important. Even aside from the external politics, tensions are also high within the walls of GDQ events. Bonesaw was a speedrunner who I covered in my last video. He's a well-respected, well-meaning, and widely admired player who got banned for some of the most trivial comments and jokes I've ever heard, which were directed at Air Canada and Owen Wilson. Please send tweets to Air Canada. Well, <laughs> Air Canada hates us. Owen Wilson hates this stream. I reached out to Bonesaw to collaborate for this video, and instead of an interview, he opted to share with me some of his experiences with GDQ staff in the form of a lengthy but detailed video of his own, which I'm going to link in the description. It's too long to go over in its entirety here, so I encourage you to go check it out on his channel. But to summarize a few key points, Bonesaw discusses how disrespected he felt around Cool Maddie, the GDQ organizer, an entire year after after his ban from competing, which once again was for Owen Wilson jokes. He takes me over to Cool Maddie, who's like the director of operations for GDQ. He's sitting at the badge counter, and Darkman and I go up to him, and Darkman says, Hey, Maddie, is it cool if Bonesaw commentates for a Techie Silent Hill run that's coming up soon? And Maddie looks at me like his uh, he's just like, staring at me like as if absolutely what why are you asking that's definitely not going to happen and he just looks at me and he says no and i said what why not and he goes because of what happened last year we've been instructed to stop talking about owen wilson oh, so. and then i this is where i started to kind of get angry but i didn't say anything bad really i just said see i'm a little confused because this unnamed speedrunner who has also been temporarily barred from submitting games to the marathon gets to go on the couch and commentate with no warnings you told me i couldn't submit games but i could commentate and yet now you're telling me i can't like it, this doesn't make any sense uh the conversation went on for a little bit longer i expressed my concern i can't really remember the rest of it but, like, I was knowing full well I was being treated unfairly at the time. Uh, but finally, Maddie agreed to me commentating, but not without saying, But remember, I don't want none of that Air Canada stuff, no Owen Wilson, none of that. Even after being allowed to commentate a Silent Hill speedrun, it seemed like GDQ staff still had it out for Bonesaw. That's Bonesaw. And that's Bonesaw. And <laughs> He's here to look pretty. The Silent Hill run ends, and I take off back to um, my hotel room. I happened to come across the GDQ Twitter and saw pictures that the official GDQ photographer, or whatever, had taken of the run. I immediately noticed that I was cropped out of every official photograph of the Silent Hill run. Every single one. You can't find an official post by the GDQ Twitter that shows me in a photograph. I was meticulously and deliberately cut out of these photographs. You can get the whole album and you can find the photographs from that run and then compare them and you'll see it. Air Canada hates us. Wow. 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 <laughs> wow. 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 You get nothing. You lose! Now, before I continue, I should mention that some of the following sections are going to involve players who happen to be trans, non-binary, LGBTQ, queer, and all that. And I want to make it clear that I respect all human rights, including trans rights, queer rights, non-binary rights. I respect people as people above all else, and you should too. 
I'm not going after anyone here for being trans or being queer, and I, I think my criticisms will reflect that. However, at the same time, unlike GDQ, I don't think that trans people, non-binary people, and queer people are above all criticism or are infallible. So when I do maybe point out things that they've done, don't take it as me attacking them because that's, that's not what I'm doing, and if you're doing that, you're missing the point. For a reason that I'm sure was totally for the enjoyment of their audience and viewers, and definitely not at all to further appease the LGBTQ plus community, GDQ decided to host a full panel discussion called Setting the Record Queer, hosted by Proto Magical Girl, who's apparently doing her best Jeb Bush impression. This is the part where you clap. <laughs> Please clap. Welcome, Awesome Games Done Quick 2019 to Setting the Record Queer Live. Wow. This is where you clap again. Come on! <laughs> <laughs> so, hi, my name's Alexis, and my pronouns are it, it's, and she, her, and I'm two of your hosts. I'm sorry, what? And I'm two of your hosts. So it turns out Proto Magical Girl made a paste bin explaining that they are plural. In this paste bin, Proto explains, I'm plural. We're plural, even. In the past, we've talked about our notion that the persons Alexis and Proto Magical Girl were, metaphorically speaking, different. A cute femme, affectionate girl, and a big, boisterous, confident streamer entity hellbent on success. It turns out there was no metaphorically about it. Alexis and Proto are completely different conscious entities in our shared mind. Over the past month-ish, we've been working hard to understand our plural self, and now it's time to share that understanding with everyone. Digging further into this, a reply on Proto's tweet reads, Is this more like a multiple personality brain thing, or like when Yami and Yugi share the same body? Proto responded with, Okay, honestly, Yu-Gi-Oh had a significantly non-zero influence, whatever the fuck that means, on our experience of plurality, so it's a lot like that. But like, it's also multiple personalities, just that those personalities have independent consciousnesses, C colon. But yeah, we can switch and talk to each other like Yu-Gi-Oh. Okay, I, at first I was a bit confused, but honestly, it would be pretty badass to have the spirit of an ancient Egyptian pharaoh, the king of games, in your consciousness. And now I play the magic card, Pot of Greed, which lets me draw two cards from the deck into my hand! Ha! Nice try, Yugi, but you've activated my trap card, Jar of Greed, which lets me do whatever the fuck I want. Screw the rules, I have money! It looks like the rules just got screwed. <laughs> Sorry, that was my Seto Kaiba persona. Now, I did actually sit through and listen to the entirety of the Setting the Record Queer podcast, and it was about as riveting as you might expect. You know, that's, that's also like... A lot of that is just like normal community building, you know? Just like... However, I do have to give credit to the panelists for being so open about their struggles with depression and anxiety, which is not easy to do, and yet seems to be prevalent amongst the speedrunning community. Uh, I was actually going through a phase of pretty bad depression at that time. It's not uncommon for streamers and queer people to struggle with depression. Uh, I struggle with depression and anxiety uh, myself. And uh, so I don't always have uh, energy to stream. And even if I'm getting into a good like pattern of stream schedules, that can just be thrown off any day by a depressive episode or an anxiety attack. So um, I don't really balance it, to be honest. On that topic, I would also like to uh, point out that I too am, since, since we have all uh, discussed our uh, suffering from depression, I also uh, suffer from depression and getting into speedrunning is also like a, a big thing to help me with that just to like because I I don't know I just sort of realized like <clears throat> friend you know in person your local friend groups and uh, internet friend groups had you know morphed and shifted over the years and I uh, was finding myself feeling more and more isolated and I wanted to get into something that um, more people were involved with. 
It seems like above all else, what these people want, what they're looking for, is a sense of community, of friendship, of having people around them that actually care, and they just happen to be LGBT or queer in this instance. And these issues of depression, anxiety, and loneliness are all too common amongst the disenfranchised youth who spend much of their free time on the internet or with gaming and I might have even included myself in that camp just a few years ago. Everyone who is in that situation deserves the same attention, help, and support as anyone else, whether they're queer or not. However, I do feel like there is some extra emotional fragility that comes with being in that LGBTQ plus community that isn't always necessary to have such as when Proto Magical Girl revealed that they felt unsafe at GDQ in a series of tweets. Didn't really have much fun this GDQ, honestly. Seeing people was nice, but the constant overwhelming fear and paranoia we were under all week was pretty draining to say the least. Knowing you're the most hated person in a room and that any given stranger has a decent odds of wishing you didn't exist isn't fun. Knowing that there are event attendees who do not believe you or people like you deserve to be safe or comfortable isn't any better. Not knowing what bigot you're going to run into around any corner makes moving about the event an agonizing experience. And knowing that the event staff won't do much of anything to improve those conditions, guess the trolls finally got to us, huh? Proto Magical Girl doesn't deserve to feel unsafe or unwelcome at GDQ or any other event for that matter. But sometimes fears and anxiety aren't always well-founded. In other words, they're not always necessary. So instead of someone like Proto having to feel these unnecessary fears and anxiety all the time, if they really are unnecessary, then the solution would not be to police everyone around them and ban everyone who might upset them, which is unrealistic and doesn't solve the core problem, but rather find a way to overcome these fears to no longer have this anxiety and ultimately to be comfortable with themselves, which Proto and anyone else deserves to be. And then you have this instance of a speedrunner named Claire's Robin who demands that they be brought food via Twitter. I need food. To elaborate, I'm having a minor anxiety attack so assistance with getting dinner at the moment would be really appreciated. I really need help with this. I've been dealing with really bad emotional pain for so long and yesterday made it so much worse. I just wanted to enjoy AGDQ. Controversial hot take here, but if you have so much anxiety that you require assistance in order to get food and your only means of getting help is by tweeting about it, then you probably shouldn't be at a speedrunning event. You should be getting the help and therapy you deserve. Again, I'm not saying that to be demeaning, I genuinely mean it. You should not have that much anxiety when it comes to getting food, that, that's not normal. Nobody. GDQ. Our new mascot, Velocity, does not have a gender and prefers the pronouns it slash them. Well, I'm glad they cleared that up or else I might have used the wrong pronouns when addressing this Sonic fanfic some teenager just drew to be GDQ's mascot. Hello, yes, non-binary, speedy, dinosaur. Am I so out of touch? No, it's the children who are wrong. Moving on to Summer Games Done Quick 2019, speedrunner Caleb Hart that I referenced earlier returns to the spotlight, but this time he falls victim to what appears to be a sexual assault accusation made against him. In a now deleted tweet by attendee Nancy, she states, Caleb grabbed multiple girls inappropriately last night, including me, and I'm about to go up and say something. In response to this, Caleb replied, I remember speaking to you for a total of two to three minutes with multiple people around me that can call out this as a lie. I would love for you to present some sort of proof. Nancy later clarified that she didn't have proof, but that she needed to know if anyone else felt unsafe. Kind of a vague reason to make such serious accusations. Although this random Twitter user does make a good argument. Does Caleb have proof that he didn't touch her ass? Hmm. And then Caleb does the most sensible thing here by deciding to stay very far away from unreasonable people. It, it's yikes, dude. And I'm just not welcome. And I get accused for sexual harassment when it never happened. And <sighs> bro, that was a fucking mess. So if I don't go, then I can't be accused of it. I I think. I'm pretty sure. 
SpongeBob SquarePants Battle for Bikini Bottom isn't the first game that comes to mind when considering speedrunning, but Streamer Shift has helped carve out a niche community for this game. He was actually set to attend SGDQ 2019, but he was banned with short notice seemingly out of nowhere. He soon realized that the ban actually came from a report issued by a longtime harasser, doxer, and all-around bully of his, which dug up a clip from the year prior in which Shift used the F word on stream. Homophobic slurs, huh? Why? What? I have friends who got banned from- who, who actually fucking said the word too, and they're at GDQ, they can do runs. This is straight up targeted harassment. This is targeted harassment. Somebody fucking, like, like, found some clip of me saying something a year ago, and sent it to GDQ, and probably said, like, look at this guy. This happened a year ago, man. It happened a year ago, and I took my punishment, and I learned my lesson, and I understand that you can't use that word for anything anymore, even if you don't mean it that way. In a video explaining the entire situation from his own YouTube channel, Shift also makes a point to express remorse over use of the word, and he even discouraged his viewers from blaming GDQ, even though he believes they made the wrong decision by caving in to one bad faith actor who reported him. Even after I, I did make this pace spin, I did say on Twitter, like, you guys should not, like, treat them this way, because, again, like, it's being hypocritical. If you want people to forgive me for something I did, you have to forgive, you have to be willing to forgive them too. After talking with Shift regarding this series of events, it seemed to me like he had already moved on from the Games Done Quick organization. As far as like my personal desires like to submit, I don't really, it doesn't really bother me, you know? Like I've already done the event once, there are other speedrun events, there are other great speedrun events and communities that you know, like I, I can have a chance to be a part of now that I'm not like focused on getting the game into this event a second time you know it doesn't it, we already had our, our chance to show it you know? like it's not going to bring that much more exposure or interest to the game if i do it again welcome everybody to awesome games done quick 2020 this time around, the pronouns of some speedrunners were featured alongside their names on the stream overlay. To start off this shit show, another one of the community's most beloved players, Trihex, was retroactively banned from participating in the event after he had already submitted his run. Because over two years ago, in October 2018, he said, you guessed it, the dreaded F word on his live stream, somewhat mirroring the situation that Shift found himself in. Trihex did write a lengthy apology post at the time, but of course, no one cares about apologies and no one is interested in forgiveness or self-improvement. This might come as a shocker, but in 2020, some GDQ viewers were once again outraged. A now viral tweet by Lady Alexis called out Spanish speedrunner Lulz Belheim, who was participating in a Final Fantasy VIII speedrun, because on his Twitter bio it states that he hates feminazism and because he supports a conservative economic policy. Obviously, the only course of action is to ban them for 18 months, which is exactly what happened immediately after Lulz Belheim completed his run. Kotaku reported that the founder of GDQ, Mike Uyama himself, actually pulled Lulz to the side, informing him of the ban due to his Twitter bio, which also contained some tongue-in-cheek pronouns and the gender distinction of demi-non-binary. Being offended at that makes absolutely zero sense. On one hand, we're being told that the gender binary is arbitrary. On the other hand, if someone makes up a new gender distinction, it's suddenly a problem? I thought the whole point was that everyone can just make up their own gender. Lulz is just taking that to the extreme outcome. For what it's worth, Lulz was reported to be a kind and caring person in real life, even around non-binary and trans people. Maybe you shouldn't judge a person by their Twitter bio alone. You didn't change it. Ah. <laughs> oh, okay, 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 okay. It's okay, it's okay. And finally, at this event, the most important issue within the speedrunning community was brought to light. Attention, all AGDQ 2020 attendees. You've been at AGDQ for just over 24 hours. By this point, you should have showered at least one time to maintain optimum hygiene. 
One word above all else has grown to define the high-pressure, politically correct climate of Games Done Quick. I achieved the world record in April 2015, then I realized um, I could just submit for FTDQ 2015 and see what happens. And then, of course, it got accepted because it was a race among the top three 120 star players. But as far as like my personal desires like to submit, I don't really, it doesn't really bother me, you know? My ban was strictly that I'm not allowed to um, submit any games. I'm not allowed to play any games. Submit, 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 submit. A ban issued by GDQ means you can no longer submit games to be played and showcased by you, the speedrunner. The speedrunner who's put countless hours into perfecting a series of oftentimes extremely difficult tasks and maneuvers in a game which takes the finest precision and the most efficient strategies in order to overcome. And on top of all of that, each speedrunner is competing with other players in their community. In order to even submit a run worth watching, a player has to be better than the vast majority of other players who haven't achieved the same world record time. And yet, after all of that, a speedrunner must submit. Not just the run, but themselves too. GDQ is an organization that funnels viewers to speedrunners. Each GDQ stream gets well over 100,000 live viewers, and for as long as their runs are, each player gets a time slot of that viewership. If a sizable enough percentage of viewers enjoy the speedrunner's personality or their gameplay enough, they will usually start to follow that streamer and be interested in their content. It's a top-down way to gain recognition on Twitch. However, by carving out a community of viewers on their own, players like Shift, Cheese, Trihex, and even Caleb Hart have built their own platform. These streamers no longer need to submit to the authority of GDQ. And who knows, maybe one day, if they grow a community large enough, these streamers won't even need Twitch anymore. Shift explained to me how he had formed his own community and was looking forward to other future speedrunning events aside from GDQ. My speedrun community has kind of formed its own community. Really? Throughout the past like four years where, well, like, I mean, all popular speedruns do, right? There are plenty of small events that you can, you can go to. Um, just look around, you know? Like, I'm personally, this year, my plans for speedrunning events are I'm gonna attend Pace 2020, which is... It's, it's a speedrunning event, but it's not charity-oriented. It's more competitive-oriented. So it's like a, it would be like a tournament where you go and people would compete in races for prizes. The speedrunning community continues to expand, even outside the realm of GDQ. Events like the European Break the Record Live bring new competition to the scene, where on January 31st, 2020, Cheese broke his own world record for Super Mario 64 Live, earning a $10,000 bounty reward. And yet, commercially speaking, Games Done Quick events are still a massive success. AGDQ 2020 pulled in over 200,000 live viewers and raised over $300 million for charity, which is an admirable accomplishment. Despite their growing success, though, every new event seems to bring subsequent controversies, scandals, and questionable bans. It seems like the GDQ staff are much more interested in appeasing people who are outraged by potentially offensive jokes, words, or beliefs even. The boundaries of what is not acceptable will only continue to expand as GDQ continues to appease those people. And that's not to say that no one should be punished or no bans should be issued, but there should also be some responsibility on the part of the viewers to not get so outraged and so offended by everything they see or hear to not overblow every little joke or word into some big controversy. The biggest tragedy in all of this is that by trying so hard to prevent anyone from being marginalized in even the slightest amount, Games Done Quick has left out some of the most outstanding players, Bonesaw, Shift, and Trihex, all of whom embody the spirit of self-improvement, kindness, and a desire to really grow and change for the better as people. Instead of being held up as shining examples of players to look up to in the community, they're instead punished and banned from games done quick, all for a couple words they might have said a few years ago that might have offended someone. 
I also reached out to Players Cheese and Shift for their thoughts on mental health and its impact on the Games Done Quick community. G gaming in general, not to sound like, you know, the whole gamers rise up meme, but like a lot of gaming is like people who are like kind of like outcasts or just like, like you said, lonely people who struggle with like, you know, mental health disorders and stuff like I mean, I've struggled with depression in the past. I've gotten I've gotten over it since, but like I feel like a lot of people who have like who are very passionate about games and isolate themselves from others for any period of time, like can relate to stuff like that. And you know, like that's that's what the, I guess like it makes the most sense for a, a company that's trying to build a, an event that's all inclusive of not just types of people, but types of games. I have a personal experience too of being having a lot of. I was having a depression issues when I started speedrunning. Uh, for the first year and a half of speedrunning, I was still living in Trinidad and I was not enjoying living there anymore. I could probably say, please say I did not leave my house to hang out anywhere for the entire year and a half that I was speedrunning. I left my house to go and visit my grandmother and their family and to play with my band when we had band practice. That was the only time I went out. I never left my house. I would never go out for a walk. I never left my house in Trinidad because uh, I was I was depressed living there. And I think that had a lot to do with me staying home practicing Mario 64 all day. It probably had a lot to do with why I got so good so fast because I did not want to do anything else and I just sat down and played all day. And, but that made it worse, you know, that that made me feel more and more lonely, felt more lazy and it's, it made stuff worse. Uh, what changed my life around was when I actually decided and told my mom, mom, I want to move to Spain uh, where my dad is and my uncles because I can't do this anymore. <laughs> I'm even getting emotional thinking about it because that was a tough time. Um, but I made a decision to personally do something about it. Um, I moved to Spain, started a lot of my life very differently and now I am by far the most happy I've ever been um, I wake up every day with something to do outside uh, or, or just something to do in general somebody to talk to and I've never been this happy but it was all because I made the decisions to do everything instead of donating to cancer research games done quick would be better off donating to mental health organizations and setting up support systems for people struggling with anxiety and depression within their own community that to me seems like a better path forward than catering to what might be the outrage for someone saying the f word two years ago or false sexual assault allegations or god forbid someone calling a demon boss a soy boy Wow.